So today I'm joined by Roger Hunt and uh, I've come across Roger because he did a remarkable blog post on everyday mindfulness and so we're going to have a little chat about Roger's story. So hello Roger. Hi, hello there. Hi there. Um, yeah, I was very kind of uh, moved by your uh, by your blog post really and, and the sort of story of the transformation that you went through. Yeah. Um, can we start off by... Uh, you can you tell me a bit about kind of where and how you grew up, and uh, you know where where um, where you start having issues, I suppose. Yeah, sure. It, it, it's I mentioned it in the blog post because it, it goes back that far, really. You know, to to, to quite a young age. Um, mm. I was uh, well brought up, mum and dad in Lancashire. Um, normal, very, very normal, normal family. You know, nothing untoward, nothing, nothing uh, problems at all. Um, but at a very young age, um, you know, I, I think we build up these layers, you know, from a young age of, of what we like, what we don't like, um, and you know, I, I think I felt um, at a young age that, uh, that, that you know, there's a lot of things that I didn't like, you know, or want to get on with. Mm, mm. Um, but you know, really, there's no sort of problems in terms of my parents. Uh, you know, from that point of view, I don't know where it really came from in that respect. Um, I do remember, you know, at an early age, I think it started more sort of came to the front when I was at primary school, and um, you know, you're dealing with issues and different people and children, and um, I remembered in my first post, I, I, I mentioned about. Um, sat in the classroom doing times table you know you sit and you you're chanting around the room and you know each one has to do the next one and yeah. just the feeling of uh, that knot in my stomach you know it's nearly my turn and, and I remember getting it wrong and the teacher saying you know see me at the the, the end and just awful and, and you know things like that really stick with you I think you know and um, you know there's sort of different different things happened like that through through my life so yeah it did started at a young age yeah um, uh. you know my parents divorced when I was seven which kind of puts another layer on you think you know oh gosh there's almost that guilt there um, there was no guilt you know it wasn't anything like that at all but when you're in that uh, quite a sensitive boy you know it, it was um, yeah. you, you know you pick up on things like that um, so yeah, those sort of layers start to build up, don't they? And that, you know, it, it, I carried them right through my life, up, up until finding mindfulness. And um, you know, it was the whole point of, of getting there that uh, something needed to change, really, Gerard. Yeah, yeah. And you talk about developing a coping mechanism yeah. as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, it's something that I did that from again at quite a young age I'd put a mask on this is you know I'd try and be somebody else yeah um, I'd try and fit in you know find the crowd of lads that you know wanted you could hide in almost right um, you know I put on a mask and try and be somebody else um, and I did that right through school. I ended secondary school and thought, great, well, it's time to start and do something different. I can be somebody else, you know, and I never went back, never spoke to anybody. Um, and then went to work, find a job, did the same there. You know, I put on a mask. I wasn't really myself. Um, and I kept putting these masks on and you, you forget who you are in the end. Yeah, it must be very stressful as well, I would have thought, over time to yeah. uh, to try and keep all that kind of false... Uh, you know, false identity up, really, I suppose. It, it, it came out, you know, as a lot of the time it would come out as anger. Mm. Mm. Uh, an anger, not necessarily to somebody else, but, uh, you know, I'd kick a chair or come home and put my head in the bed and bang the... Per you know, just something, you know, the, the anger would come out and it's simply because you're hiding who, who, who are really, you know, who, who, who is it? Keep putting on these masks and and not not being yourself and um yeah that's that's where it went in the end yeah and then the, the next kind of milestone in in this uh in this journey i suppose would be when your stepfather fell ill yeah he'd been ill for quite some time uh, and we'd been caring for him and um 
he really struggled with it. You know, he struggled with his ill health, and uh, we're, we're we're all struggling around him. And uh, yeah, sadly, he passed away. But it was a strangely enough, you know, it, it was a bit of a wake up call for me to think, you know, hang on, you know, you see his life go, and you think, where, 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 where is mine going? Yeah, am I going to be regretting? Am I missing something? Or you know, it, it suddenly made me wake up. And how old were you at this point? Wasn't long ago. It was only um, in 2015. Right. So, um, and I've been about a year in mindfulness now. So, in fact, today is a year, a year of living mindfully. Oh, fantastic. Uh, as of today, which <laughs> is quite amazing. <laughs> yeah, what a pertinent moment to be talking to you. Then. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think I'd, I'd gone into mid-30s, you know, now. So, um, uh it's quite some years of, of living, you know, not being myself and, um, mm. you know, to see him, him go and think we walked, I remember the day clearly, you know, me and my mum was there, we walked out of the hospital, looked at each other and thought, this is it, we got everything in one bag, um, you know, we're walking out without him and uh, I realised then that, you know, something just has to change. It yeah. really has to change because uh, you know some I can't couldn't carry on, C- couldn't yeah. carry on not being myself and uh, you know living with those emotions, anxiety, anger. I uh, can't do it. So what did you do? Um, do you know it, it was strange. I, I had uh, on my Kindle uh, for for whilst my stepfather was ill, I I looked at things like uh, mindfulness, and I downloaded the audio book from. Um, Mark Williams, you know, the Frantic World. Um, yes. Audio book. Yeah, Finding Peace. I've never. World, yeah. yeah, I'd never looked at it. I'd, it <laughs> um, I'd, I'd left it on my Kindle. I thought I just can't. I can't do it. You know, it's not really. Is it an? An- it can't be an answer. Just, just sitting there doing nothing. You know, it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it can't be the answer. And um, I actually, uh, I think it was on Facebook. I noticed a post for um, Mrs. Mindfulness dot com. She was running the uh, thirty one day mindfulness summit. Right. In October uh, 2015. Uh, and it coincided with me taking a fortnight up uh, in a cottage in Scotland, um, right on the west coast, in the middle of nowhere, really, just looking over to the Isle of Skye. Um, just needed a break, you know, to get away. And, yeah. Uh, and and uh, the summit said, you know, learn mindfulness online, learn a new way of living you know and there's 31 different speakers each day uh and i thought well look you know okay let's have a look let's let's give it a, you know something needed to change let's have a look at it and um I, I was kind of hooked after day one mark williams was the opening speaker and uh i, I was hooked at that point <laughs> yeah he, he, he talked a lot about living on autopilot and um you know, I, I felt that that related to me, you know, massively. The, the joy had gone, the spark had gone, you know, because I'm, I'm constantly sort of living in, in uh, anxiety or a thought, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I was hooked at that point and uh, just did the practice. You know, it was difficult to think, right, how can you intellectually think about this? How does it work? You know, but actually I just sat and listened and did the practice and then... The answers came to me at that point. I think it's interesting that um, you said you had a two-week holiday because it's like, uh, but you know, the, but the book had been there already. I think it's quite, um, yeah. quite apt that you know you, you had to make a bit of space in yeah. order to to sort yeah. of like uh, give yourself time to get into this sort of thing. I guess. Yeah, I think there has to be a. I don't know. Something brought me to it. There has to be a bit of a wake-up call, and I think. Um, Something needs to snap you out of it, doesn't it? And and think, you know, let, let's look at it differently. But yeah, it's a fact that I'd had that book on my Kindle for for, for ages and not really looked at it. Um, and I just needed that break away, something, you know, that space to to, to start it. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a similar thing with um, the Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, and yeah. uh, I I was given it, I don't know, a few years ago, and. Um, I think I read three pages and just yeah. put it back on the bookshelf or whatever. And it was only when I got um, 
got interested again in meditation and start, started actually practicing meditation. Yeah. I read it again and it blew my mind the second time. Oh, the same yeah. book that meant nothing just a short time previously, you know. Yeah. So perhaps there is quite a lot to be said about the context in which you kind of approach these things, you know. I think so, yeah. Um, I, I was interested, I read your, your blog the other day, you know, about, you, you know, you'd got to Brighton and mm. saw things, you know. Uh, such a similar thing. I mean, I'd been to this cottage in Scotland before, but all of a sudden you see it very differently. Yeah. Um, you know, I do a meditation in the morning and then, then come out. Uh, oh my God, how beautiful is this place? You know, and you're just seeing things so differently. Yeah. Um, that that's why, where I started to get hooked, you know, especially being there and seeing the beauty. Because yeah, how often, yeah. so many times we're lost in it, aren't we? You know, we're lost, we just don't see it. Um, yeah, that's you know. right. Yeah, you can walk past beautiful things every day and, and just not notice them, can't you? Yeah. And um, and that is its own reward, to be able to just appreciate the beauty around you, I think. It's uh, it's good It's yeah. good to have some rewards early on, I think, to sort of encourage you. You need for, that, yeah. 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 Um, because it isn't, you know, it, it's not... I mean, like today, you know, it's easy to fall back into an old pattern of thinking, and this is where the practice comes in, isn't it? You know, um, mm -hmm. it can be making a cup of tea mindfully. You know, <laughs> it's it's still, you know, it, it's daily practice in the small things. Actually, what what counts, I think. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, they're all they're all kind of well. Practice is a great word, isn't it? Because they all they're yes. all <laughs> developing those kind of ways of of looking at things that you can take into the rest of your day. And I think sure. that's where the real strength comes from. So, um, to to go back to your story, then you uh, you started listening to um, Mark Williams and so on. So, what happened after that? Well, yeah, I mean, the thirty-one days ended with John Cabot's in at a, a, a long meditation at the end, which was you know quite amazing. But um, I, I then actually went on to um, I downloaded the apps Headspace and Insight Timer. Right. Uh, and I started with the Headspace uh, guided meditation, only ten minutes a day, mm. um, and and it sort of grew from there. Um, and then um, I've I've now sort of joined uh, Sirius Sita at uh, Mindfulness CIC, mm -hmm. which is the first uh, quite. I did the eight week, uh, eight session course, um, mindfulness course with him, which is very different to a, you know listening to guided to be in a group. Um, yes. yes. But, but quite amazing, quite amazing, and and it just sort of deepens the practice. I still do a lot of, I still do some guided meditations, but more and more now I'm feeling, um, I can just sit with what's going on, with nothing, you know, and just be aware of what's coming to me, thoughts, feelings, emotions, um, and that has only been cultivated really from uh, doing the group. Uh, and with Sirius Sita, uh, with Mindfulness CIC, I think. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I started s straight after the uh, Mindfulness Summit. I went into guided meditation, you know, through Headspace and Insight Timer, which I still yeah. use, but more, more, more now. It's, it's, you know, just sitting with what comes along and, and being aware of what's uh, what's there in, in the moment. Um, yeah, I think it's quite it's quite interesting the eight week course. I think it uh, it changed me a lot. I thought I. Um, <laughs> thought I sort of knew it all. <laughs> yeah, 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 you do, don't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly the same, but no, completely not. <laughs> yeah, 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 I would definitely recommend the eight-week course to anybody who might be listening to this. Um, if they haven't done it, I think it is a real a real eye-opener, also just a really helpful way of, of looking at things and learning, yeah. I suppose. It kind of unraveled a little bit, you know, because, again, it's just easy to put into the uh, the ego mind again, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I know I know what's, uh, what this is about. I've got it got it sussed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went to, you know, to the thing. Ah, gosh, you know, it opens up some other, other thoughts and process about it. But, yeah, it was the, one of the best things I, I did. Well, the best thing, really, was the, um, you know, to be introduced to it, and then it's all flowed from there. But, um mm. Yeah, amazing. I'd certainly recommend the eight-week course to find a good teacher. You know, that's uh, uh, can help you in that journey. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you um, did you do your course in in a uh, in person? Like, you know, was it 
Yes, you were physically yes, present somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luckily, um, local to me, uh, just down the road. So, which was great. So, um, and it's an ongoing thing. You have that sort of build up that ongoing relationship with them, which is great. Yeah, yeah. And you're looking to become a teacher now, is that right? Hopefully, yes. I mean, there's a. Yeah, it's something I want to do. Uh, I think as I the more I practice, you know, the compassion comes in, and and I I can see so many people with a similar story um, that I just want to raise the awareness. I think of of this practice. It's, I know it's not a you know it's not a, an answer for everything, but certainly it's a, a big cog in the in the wheel, isn't it? You know, in the machine uh, to to help and. Um, I think the more I practice, the more I think, you know, I'd love to give, give back yeah, uh, yeah. And, and help others perhaps that just need that, uh, that little bit of help. So yeah, in the future, definitely. Um, next year I'm booked onto a tr- trying to teach course and we'll see how that goes. But you know, for now it's, it's to build on my own practice and uh, I'm, I'm writing quite a lot just to, to, you know, follow my own journey really and see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. I think one thing I thought was really interesting in, in your blog post was you said um, you still get anxious, but yeah. mindfulness has taught you to make friends with anxiety. Yes. Um, could, could you explain that to people? Because I think people who don't practice mindfulness, who might be interested, would find that a bit of a, a strange yeah. concept to get their head around, really. It is, it is strange. Um, I think what, what I realised, uh, and, and this again came out from, from the, the eight-week course, is that um, I was kind of battling anxiety and not letting it be. When when I learned to sit there and just feel the emotion, feel where it was in the body almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you say the question, ah, yes, I'm, it's anxiety. You almost say hello to it. You know? Yes. <laughs> it sounds daft, but you know, um, when I actually sat there and and just I'm you know sitting in meditation and feel anxious about something or I'd bring something to mind that you know actually you know what's going to make me feel anxious mm, mm. where is the emotion in the body I felt it just welcomed it in and and as I did that the feeling started to dissipate um it, 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 it's difficult to explain it has you have to do it you know it's just one yeah. of those things uh but, sure. but just to welcome it in to feel the emotion where it was in the body um, and to make friends with it rather than battling it. Yeah, I, I found that. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say I found that really quite mind blowing that that you're told to say, yeah, where, whereabouts in your body are you feeling this? And all of a sudden, I thought, geez, here is yeah. a technique for dealing with stuff that no one's ever yes. ever even suggested there was a technique no. for. And that's no, I mean, I've been, been, yeah, I've been to the doctor before, and you know, before all of this, I've been to the doctor, so you know, I feel it just, I just feel this knot somewhere, I just feel anxious, stress, you know, uh, you know, and he's like, oh, well, okay, well, maybe a tablet, or you know, or do you need to just whatever, take some time out? But mindfulness was the key almost, it's that just welcoming it in and thinking, actually, I don't have to battle this. Mm. Mm. Uh, it was my you know a real turning point yeah absolutely yeah 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 so uh, what's what's your sort of daily practice now what what would you do um i practice uh, depends on it but be about half an hour my uh, formal meditation per day mm-hmm. and, and it really depends i mean normally i'd sit i have a space upstairs just a stool that i sit on um, and it, 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 what comes along really it's saying more more lately I've been sat just sitting in awareness um, allowing sounds to come allowing thoughts to come allowing them to go um, and also I use guided meditations uh, mountain meditation which for me was one of the best uh, guided meditations if you've not done it or anybody's not done it it's it's worth doing it builds that sort of strong i don't know i, I was putting a blog post of mine it's sort of soft of heart but strong of back it's that cultivating that um openness but being quite firm you know even in uh, times of of uh, trouble or you know anxiety you can still remain solid and firm 
Um, so I use that guided meditation. Uh, mountain Body. meditation. Yes, mountain meditation. Uh, and it's almost um, bringing the awareness as if you are a mountain. And a okay. mountain is solid, it doesn't move. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Your feet are the, the rock, the base of the mountain, um, arms and legs at the sides. Uh, the heads up in the can be up in the cloud. It can be in rain. It can be in sun. Um, and that is just a visualization meditation, which um, I found really powerful. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, how, how do you think? How how are you now compared to how you were before? Is there a way you can put that into words? I can. Yeah. It's really subtle. It's a subtle but big change. No, nothing. Um, I didn't. For example, I didn't say anything to my work colleagues about you know what I was doing, but they came to me and said, "There's something different about you, Raj." <laughs> right. Uh, and that, you know, it's a way. Uh, it's it's a non-reacting. You know, it's not much calmer. Mm. Um. Uh, I, I'd say it's you know just being who I am and allowing that to be, yeah. uh, and that's only been cultivated through 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 I believe through mindfulness and living a mindful life da- daily. Yeah, yeah, it's quite interesting, isn't it? I think um, it's occurred to me that people may perhaps not notice any change in me, but inside yes. everything's changed. Yes, um, you yeah. know that the whole kind of the whole way I look at uh, the whole way I look at things has changed and yeah, yeah it's it's quite a it, it's quite a strange thing to describe to people isn't it because it's yeah. on, on one level it's revolutionary but on another level it's kind of invisible yeah, yeah nothing out of it I mean I, I think also I used to be guilty of um, about like putting the mask on you know I change something every couple of years you know I have to change the car or I, you know I try and move house or get yeah. another life yeah. Uh, so things were changing from on the out outside, but in the last year, you know, nothing's changed, but everything's changed. Does that, that sounds stupid, but it, it makes sense to me, you know. It, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I come into my house at night and I think, oh, this is this is nice, you know. It's my home. I see my dog differently, you know. It's yeah, just an amazing thing, you know. And uh, the changes are subtle, uh, and I think sometimes that can. Uh, people, we, we put like a, a goal onto something, don't we? We need to strive and find something. You know, we've got to do it. Got to do this. Mm, uh, mm. Maybe sometimes that's why you know you can hit a brick wall with this sort of thing because it is subtle. But to carry on with the practice is, um, you know, daily practice of mindful living is. It, it changes everything for me. Do you meditate every day? Every day. Yeah. Twenty minutes to half an hour every day. Um, time wise I mean I, 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 I try and do it in the morning but if it doesn't in the morning I do it when I come home from work um, just before the evening starts um, but it, it varies you know I've even started doing it you know I'll, I'll sit in meditation I think I was sat in the supermarket car park the other day you know just sit there and meditate yeah, yeah, yeah. you know uh, you realise you don't have to sit in your place you can do it wherever really yeah, it's absolutely. Just a few yeah. breaths at the you know the red light goes on. It's ah, feel my feet on you know, breathe for you know five breaths and it's there. Yeah, yeah. I often meditate on the bus. It's uh, yes, it's, it's changed the whole kind of quality of my bus journey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it has. Yeah, <laughs> or, or indeed when the bus is late and I'm waiting for it as well. Of course, yeah. Uh, good times to practice. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And have these you... things come up in our life, don't they? You know, things will challenge us, uh, yeah. and they have for me. You know, challenged me. You know, my boss might go off or come in in a tangent or something. Or um, I think the more I practice, the more compassionate I am. The more I can see other people's points of view. It's not always like this. It's not always great. You have to suddenly. I think it's that non-reacting that's been the big thing for me. Is I actually I know something's going on there. It's making me feel a bit anxious or what have you but i can just step back a moment yeah uh, not yeah. react That's and then it, yeah yeah the answers kind of then come to you almost intuitively don't they they don't you're not forcing anything no absolutely yeah it's uh it, it's yeah it makes life a whole load easier i think when when um 
yeah, when you get a sort of stressful situation or a situation that would otherwise be stressful, instead of it being right there in your face, dominating everything, you can kind of look at it more from a distance, I think. And, yes. Uh, and nothing ever looks as big when it's far away, does it? Yes. Yeah, it's just observing it. Yeah. Have you had any um, problems uh, with, you know, if, if you, you mentioned hitting a brick wall for some people. Have you yeah. struggled with anything? Yeah, I mean, there's been a, I think it's that subtlety. You think, oh, nothing's happening. Mm. Or um, I have to deal with a situation or, or what have you. And, and um, you, you do realize it's there. I think it's a bit like I can relate it to like a coiled spring and you're stretching it but it wants to go back to its original shape i think the more you practice the more it can't really go back to that original shape it's more um you know it, it, yeah it's, it's just in the constant practice but yeah I've, I've had moments where i've i've thought is this actually working or you know um you know or i might miss a day or something or miss a couple of days and you start to feel a bit yuck and you think oh Ah, right, okay. This is because I've stopped practicing mindfulness, perhaps. Yeah. Um, not because yeah. of anything else. You know, it's actually just get back to the practice. Yeah, uh, I've noticed that very, very specifically, really, that if I do miss miss a day or two, um, I can feel old tensions creeping back in. So yes. I, I think a pra- yeah, keeping it up is very much uh, an important part of it, for me, anyway, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just everyday life, isn't it? It's not a massive, you know, oh, all of a sudden we're all enlightened. It's everyday life and it's, um, you know, there's there's good things about that and bad things, isn't there? It's just being able to be aware of them a little bit more and observing what's going on, I think, mm. for me. Mm. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I think um, with with all of this, what, what I'm sort of, keen to get over to people really is just how normal it is and how available it is and yes you know you don't need to believe in anything in yeah. particular uh, or, or you don't even really need to believe in mindfulness do you, you know you just no. try it and see what happens you know yeah i mean that's that's the thing and it's why i had that that uh, book on my uh, audio book on the kindle for so long it was a similar similar you know thought i was I, you know, I'm going to go and sit on the top of a mountain with my legs crossed and chant. It's it's mm. not like that at all. You know, yeah. Yeah. it's it's a simple. Pra- well, it's simple. We say it's simple, but it, it can be. You know, it's a difficult one to grasp. But until you start practicing it and you see what's happening, um, that, that it is in that you just have to do it. Yeah, I, I when I first went to a meditation center, which here is a Buddhist center. Um, yes, I was like. I was kind of terrified, really, because I thought, yes. you know, you had to sit with your legs crossed and your hands in those funny positions and um, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And I just thought, well, I just yeah. can't do that. You know, I'm, I'm physically unable to cross both my legs. And yeah. <laughs> so I was yeah. just, yeah. God, when I got yeah. there, there was seats and there was, you yes. know, you could sit <laughs> how you want and no one told you, you know, anything was right or wrong. And it was... Um, yeah, it was a completely different experience. One which I'd really like to kind of get over to people. You know, you, this is not, it doesn't require that you kind of like have, I don't know, long hair or baggy jeans or whatever. No. You know, it really is just there for everybody. It is. It's just to tap into, isn't it? And, um, you know, I had a similar thing. You know, I went to the first group session. You know, what do you expect with it? And um, my teacher was very keen to know the roots of Buddhism, but it's not something that, you know, it's not a religious thing. It's not anything like that. It's it's a way of life. It's a way of being, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just keen to get that across. So, um, you know, I think it doesn't have to be anything special. It's like we said, you know, you do it on the bus. You sit in the chair. It doesn't have to be anything special. It's just to be in a present, present moment and, and living in awareness. Absolutely, yeah. And you've started a blog. So. I have, yeah, yeah. Again, I mean, it's not something I thought I'd do, and um, it's interesting. There's, you know, sort of. I think it was more of a journal for myself. I think more than anything, and um, you know, very heart on the sleeve, sort of put it down on paper again to try and raise the awareness and uh, and and let people know it's a, you know, it's a, it is a simple practice to carry on, but there are certain nuances with it. Uh, so I wanted to just share my journey. Uh, almost in a way and it's interesting as we go on that 
the more I practice, the, the drama disappears. You know, the almost the interest in the past is, is going, and um, you know, there's a new sort of journey ahead, which is 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 quite amazing. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think uh, one thing I was meant to, was going to say before when you talked about appreciating your house and the dog and all yes. that sort of thing. <laughs> one, one thing I've noticed is that previously, when, whenever I lived in a flat for more than like a, a year or two I always started getting itchy feet and wanting to move Yeah. and mindfulness has made me sit a lot easier with the idea that I, I, know I quite like where I live and I don't need to yes. move again you know it's it stops you striving for for things that you don't need to strive for you know it's, yeah. it stops you misplacing your ideas about what's going to make your life better yes. I think yes. and, um, and just looking at things as they are instead uh, it's been a massive thing for me, Gerard, because um, you know that that sort of um, short-lived joy, isn't it? You know, if you change, so I used to change the car and it'd be fine for a week or two, and then you know, yeah, then you get fed up with it, or yeah, you know, the joy disappears. It's finding that joy again for me. That's what mindfulness has done. Is in, but it's in ev- without changing. It's there. Yeah, um, it's just uncovering it. Um, yeah, finding. Like you said yeah. about walking through Brighton, you know, and if you're in awareness, you you can see it, can't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Um, yeah, awareness is is something everybody sort of accidentally bumps into occasionally. I think. <laughs> yes. Yes. And mindfulness is just a way of kind of tapping in there when you want, really, which is uh, Tap, tapping into it. Yeah. And, yeah. and accessing it when when you when you when you want it or need it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I used to strive for things all the time, and it'd be like, oh yeah, let's let's, let's move house or change job or do this, do that, you know. And it gets tiring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, or I get angry, or I get tired, and you, you know, I've, I've yeah, mindfulness has helped me, and it's an ongoing process. Um, these things come up all the time. It's it's good stuff to work with. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's a bit like. Um... When you're striving for all that stuff, I think it's a bit like a, a finishing line that keeps getting further and further away. Yeah. And uh, and mindfulness kind of makes you stop caring about the finishing line, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? You know, you you, you don't see the finishing line anymore. No. That's no. why I was a bit worried. I'm going to start this blog about the journey, and and it it, it changes for me because you know, the journey. Well, it's it's practice of a life, isn't it? Yeah. You know, for me, it's it's a, it's a, a, a it, this has become part of my life as much as my foot is part of my you know my body <laughs> that's that's how it ingrains into you and i think you have to get to that that point um with it and, and yeah it's a work work for the rest of life which is i, I love it it's exciting it's exciting at the same time absolutely um so for people who want to follow your blog would you want to say the uh, address yeah sure um i'm um Set up my blog. It's the uh, the Mind Shed. Um, that's uh, the Mind Shed one word. dot co. dot uk. Uh, and it's yeah, just uh, you know, open heart on the sleeve, sort of you know, as it happens, journal really uh, my journey through mindfulness. Mm. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, I write once a week on a Monday. And you can sign up on there as well to uh, newsletters and different things. Uh, you know, my li- mindful musings. See what happens in the week. Um, yeah, it's good for you know if, if perhaps you know it's very open to the forum in terms of people wants to to discuss where they are with it and their reflections on it. Um, and uh, yeah, open, honest account of of the journey, really, Gerard. And fantastic reading and very recommended as well. Thank you. That's a, that's a pleasure. No, it's, it's absolutely great. When people are open, I think that's for me. That's you know when the in, reading is the most interesting, really. I think, and um, and mindfulness does sort of open you up, doesn't it? I think it certainly opens me up a lot more. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not even sure how to explain that, but yeah, I just I do feel more kind of open. Yeah, which is quite interesting. Yeah, I, mean, I would not wouldn't have considered anything like this. You know, well, it wouldn't have come up, but. Um, you know, to, to be like that is, is different. And it's just about being, uncovering your true self, I think, you know, and, and getting rid of these masks, like I say. it's uh, And that has allowed me to almost have that voice to, to, to write. Um, 
and and just put it out there really and see what people think brilliant yeah well um, if people want to go yep we're looking at the mindshed.co.uk uh so that seems like a, a pretty kind of apt place to uh to thank you very much for your time roger thank and, you uh, it's been a fascinating conversation and also i'd like to wish you the very very best of luck as well as i said at the start i think your uh your your writing is extremely moving and and very inspiring because of that thank you gerard i appreciate that and uh you know I'll be see how things go it's a constant practice and it's uh it's it's yeah it is life-changing absolutely absolutely thank you very much for your time Thanks, Gerard.